Guys, the door's open. Have y'all seen Adrian? He's gonna miss out on this whole dungeon. Yo, I'm over here. What are y'all doing? What are you doing? Find the goblin camp. Hurry up. We're not doing that. We just killed all the druids and we got this new dungeon. Come on. What? What do you mean? What, what do you mean you killed all the druids? Every time. Every time we go to a town, you guys kill everyone. Every single time. Ugh. Forget it. You know what? Let's go kill some goblins. We got these new gloves that are good for you. Assholes. Hello and welcome back to my channel, Random Drop. And this week, I want to talk about Baldur's Gate 3. Now specifically, I want to talk about the Baldur's Gate 3 multiplayer. Now there's lots of reviews of the game in general out there. It's an incredible masterpiece of a game. It has issues. It's buggy, but it's also fucking massive. But I want to talk about my specific experience of playing this game the first time through multiplayer only with three plus friends with three plus friends jumping into my campaign or I would say our campaign at a certain point and kind of share my thoughts with you. Right. So Baldur's Gate 3 multiplayer. How is it? Let's get into it. Hey, everybody. Before we get started, I just wanted to say if you enjoy our content and want to stay up to date with our videos, hit the subscribe button. It really helps the channel. Thanks. So on to the video. So one thing to keep in mind, let's start with the biggest thing of Baldur's Gate 3 multiplayer. I would recommend bringing a maximum of you and two other friends. Because if you're not aware, once a person joins your match, that's it. You cannot remove that character, delete that character, eject them from the party. They are in the party and you will be managing them moving forward. So you want to really want to bring two friends that are I mean, you're going to treat like this like a D&D &D campaign. Hey, we're going to meet up every now and then, or we're going to play this game together. Thankfully, I had a group of friends that, I mean, we do this every day anyways, right? We, we get on after work, we play some games that we're into, and bada bing, bada boom, Monday to Friday. Then on the weekends, sometimes we get really deep into shit. Baldur's Gate 3 killed some weekends, that's for damn sure. Um, and every day after work, we were always like, hey, you on? You ready? You ate lunch? You cooked dinner? Um, baby's asleep? All right, sweet. Let's jump in play some more Baldur's Gate, right? And that's what we did Monday through Friday for fucking two weeks. And we clocked in 80 hours in my campaign. Uh, so again, it is a very long game and it'll take a long time to get through. And I would very much recommend bringing three friends you always play with or you, you, you got to kind of trust a bit, just like you would with a D&D campaign, right? There's a commitment into this. Um, so just don't jump into people's games and leave because they have to... <laughs> They have to deal with your fucking character at a certain point. So most of them would probably restart a game instead if you're not going to come back. But hey, we did four people. Um, one of my friends joined at the beginning, uh, was there for like the first act. And then he came in at the last act, but he wanted to play single player. He wanted to do his own thing. Um, he finished the game because he had like taken the week off. Right. So he finished the game before I did. He finished his matchup, came back for the last act and took took his character back. His character was really good. It was a ranger. It was really strong. Um, I enjoyed playing her a lot. She ended up becoming pretty much the main character of the game anyways. But you lose out. The thing is, you lose out because you're you're stuck with those characters. You cannot bring in Gale, Asterion, Shadowheart, Will. The list goes on. There's a fantastic cast of characters that you get to do nothing with if you play four out of four multiplayer. At least with three out of four, you could slot one in whoever you feel like hanging out with. This also breaks quests. There are many quests where they require that person to be there. And there's lots of quests you can get done without them being there, but there's some that you cannot. And you have no option to bring them in with four people, which I feel like, I know Larian most likely does, hates this feature, hates how it's built and wishes it worked better. I imagine it's like crazy spaghetti code and it's gonna take a long time to either fix. I don't know if you had to have plans of fixing it. Maybe it's just too much work. But I imagine, like, no one probably looked this, no one looked at this at Larry and be like, yeah, that drop in and drop out multiplayer is fine. No, it's really bad. People are avoiding playing with each other because of it. If I, in my single player campaign that I'm running now, I wish my friends could just jump in and out. But now I feel like I'm locking them out and pushing them out, being like, no, this is my single player run. Please get out. Like, I would not mind if one of them jumped in. 
we did some shit together and they left. And then like, oh, their character got stowed away in mercenaries or something. But it's not the case of that. People are avoiding playing with each other. And this game is so fucking incredible playing with your friends. It's it's the first time experience playing with a group of friends is there's nothing like it, man. It is so fucking fun. This is some of the most fun I've had with these guys and like since PUBG came out, man. We could not stop playing this game. And the fact that we beat this game and there's nothing else out there like it really fucking sucks. <laughs> nice. Nice. Oh my god, dude. you can't even loot her. Dude, you Literally down the hole. You threw the kid down the cavern, man. What about uh, loot, Eddie? Oh. Maybe in the future, games like this will pop out, and there'll be more and more like games like this that are so goddamn strategic and, and fun. And god damn it, man. It was such an incredible experience. But you cannot get that experience again on a second playthrough. There'll be tidbits, there'll be. There would be mysteries you never saw and parts you never saw, and it would be, for the most part, different in a lot of ways, but there's so there's still too much overlap. It's still not a new adventure, right? And it sucks that we... I, it really sucks now that we beat this, and, man, there's not another journey we can go on. And I know it's like that black void when you, like, beat something. It's like when I beat Persona 5. I felt like a fucking void in my heart when I finished that game. This is that same feeling now. I do still have my single-player run where I'm experiencing a lot of new things, but I know a lot of stuff. I know where like a lot of this story's going and like what choices I'm making and what to look out for. And that wasn't the case in our first play th in, in my multiplayer pay playthrough. But I'm enjoying hanging out with these great characters that I did not get to see very much other than my camp. But it sucks my friends can't just jump in every now and then and then leave. Now that I'm going to do my single player, I'm like, now we're all cut off into our own single player playthroughs and just being like not talking to each other now. And it, it stinks, man like oh man it's so frustrating and i hope they fix it one day there's an add-on where you can increase your player count to like six people but the game is gonna be like piss easy if you do that the game is already easy after level five if you know what you're doing at a certain point you become so powerful that you're gonna just if you know what you're doing and know how to gear out your character you're gonna decimate shit um and we are very good at that type of stuff so maybe our we should have played on tactician but this is there's no other game like this. We didn't know what to expect. So hey, because Divinity was fucking hard as shit. And maybe I guess Divinity had the same thing too, where at a certain point you got really strong after certain levels. But anyways, big thing as I rented, uh, you are not able to swap out characters and you are locked to those people. But it was still a ten out of ten experience. I still recommend it, even though you lose out a lot. You lose out a ton. They become those characters become like weird side characters that don't leave the camp that you talk to and like they're telling you it's just it's so weird and awkward and you'd want to hang out with them more and i'm enjoying a lot of it in my single player but it just really 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 stinks man so hey the the issues with the side characters or the secondary characters okay we'll, we'll move on that's my big complaint that's probably honestly the biggest complaint i have about the game other than the game uh being a bit too easy after a certain amount of levels I, I know some people think it's really hard at the, at the game. The, at the beginning of the game, it's really hard because you're so goddamn weak. If you know if you know how to play an RPG, you're gonna figure it out. You'll be fine. So another thing to talk about in multiplayer is that experience of our campaign. Um, you, F5 a lot. F5, F5, F5 every minute. If you don't know what F5 is, that is quick save, quick save, quick save, quick save, quick save, quick save. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Probably burn me. Too weak. Strained by no! Oh, you <laughs> broke it. I am not doing this. I am not watching this happen to me. Adrian, Adrian, <laughs> man, we can't just we can't just go reloading all the goddamn time, Adrian. That's Eddie, fucking crazy. You totally would. <laughs> uh, we're gonna have to fight the. I mean, that fight took like two seconds. Yeah, that wasn't bad. Watch it just completely wipe us this time. Dude, I'm, I was wondering, I was like, is it going to burn him or is it going to break to a uh, fucking just I would have rather have died than watch that happen. <laughs> uh. Now don't do it because it, don't do it too much because it's, it literally freezes the game. 
for like 20 seconds and then saves, right? But every 10 minutes or so, hit that button. And if you're playing with your friend, if you're about to do some weird shit, if you're about to rob someone, tell them. Tell them, be like, hey, Adrian, hit F5 real quick. I'm going to rob this lady. And, hey, we robbed a lot of people. Uh, but, yeah, it, expect chaos is what I would say. Expect chaos with multiple people running around, all talking to people, and all thinking differently, right? Or how they would handle the situation is different. Um, but there's also there's a, there's like a kind of a negative, but it's just like a nature of the, the, the engine, which they'll probably get better at in the future. Man, sometimes you'll just activate combat and you don't know why. Uh, so th our how our campaign started is we got to the Druid Village, right? We got there. And you know the part where there's a part where there was a girl who stole a statue and the parents are mad and they're trying to get past the dru a line of druids so they could go see her and see like, hey, what's going on? And the druids are like, no, back off. Don't cross this line. And it, when you're walking up to this, it puts you in a cutscene and grabs your character. Well, it just grabs your character. So it grabs only one person. So my friend, Bryce, on the, <laughs> to my right, keeps fucking walking. He walks right past the druids. And they pop off. There. Oh, it's settled, Luis. What if I punched one? Oh, God, who hit oh, it? Shit. I didn't hit it. They're hostile. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. What happened? All right, we're fighting the whole grove. Okay. <laughs> Bryce, were you talking to them? No, I just walked up, and then they got all... Time has come. Like, what... The uh, Yo, these druids... Yo, what's happening? <laughs> what the fuck what is happened? happening? They immediately, the cutscene happens. They immediately look at each other. They're starting shit, and they just start killing all the tieflings. And we don't know what the fuck is happening. Everything starts engaging, and everyone's running, and the, the cutscene just cuts. And and the, where I was having a dialogue with them, trying to talk my way through, um, and it just cuts, and... Shit's just popping off, at the, and they're murdering each other, and then the quest pops pops up, save save the fucking refugees. And we went with it, because it was really funny, actually, so we continued on with it, but... So my first playthrough of this game, the Druid Village got wiped out. So did the Goblin Camp, because we didn't go talk to her. We went in there and killed the goblins. So literally both sides you could side with, we, we vaporized both sides. Which, we had already killed the druid camp. We could have gotten the fucking drow lady to side with us. But fuck it. Kill her too. Well, why not? Right? So, we murderized everyone in Act 1. Now that I'm playing Act 2 again, I missed a lot of quests. There's so much shit that's just not in the game um, when you, like, murderize both villages. It's really funny that you can do it. It's great. So, what I'm saying is commit. <laughs> or commit. Or, like, again, F5, man. Be ready to like reload because sometimes shit would just pop up. I don't know. Talk to him. See what he says. Probably have to escort him out or something. Oh god. Oh, they're all going off. <laughs> oh boy. Reload. Dang, it just mm. keeps going. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no I wonder that dude was so up. scared. <laughs> <laughs> we went with it because we played early access so we played a lot of this stuff before so we're like ah, that's funny x like we didn't know how long like we weren't far thinking like hey how would this affect us which like oh maybe we'll lose a quest or two not realizing those qu those characters carry on for the whole game right um so yeah I, so there's like quests where like people will disappear because you didn't hang out with them or didn't see them or when you kill too many people, they just kind of disappear because, like, the logic doesn't know what to do. And then your quest log would pop up, like, so-and-so left. This person died. And you're like, wait, what the fuck? When did this happen? So, hey. But again, with the whole Druid thing, hey, we, we went with it. But we, we tried not to save scum too much as we played through. If we legitimately didn't have enough inspiration, um, we would go with whatever roles would happen, right? It's just there's a lot of situations where you're walking down a hallway and it Cutscene triggers and you don't know what's about to happen, and it picks the first person you're fucking walking with, right? Usually in single player, you would be picking your character and walking with them, or you would pick your talker, you would pick your talking character, which is usually your main character. I am a warlock with persuade, high persuasion, and charisma, 
I need to do the talking. So there's a lot of scenes where like the, like a character's gonna like bad shit's gonna happen if you don't talk to them correctly. And sometimes it'd get like fucking Bryce who like can't talk to his stump. Is, is practically a, his character's practically a stump. He does damage and we love him, but he can't talk his way through this shit. He has a like negative one on rolls, right? So it just sucks that like there were times where we'd have to reload because of situations like that. Where it's like that's not really fair. I was if I was playing single player, I would have walked in with this character, right? Like so, be prepared for weird stuff like that to happen, where your friends are gonna accidentally trigger things and it's just gonna fuck it. It's just gonna grab them and be like, all right, let's go, right? So if there's someone you designate someone who's the leader of the group or like the one you're gonna follow uh, as you're like exploring areas, right? In towns, it's it's like more in dungeons and stuff, right? But like in big towns and all that, in the more open parts of the game. I would say we got more like there's a lot of quests NPCs. I didn't ever see their cutscenes, right? Cause maybe Bryce was the one who talked to them instead. And I was off doing my own thing. And that, and at first I was like, Oh man, I'm missing stuff. And then I kind of just let it go. I was like, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll like clock in and see what Bryce is doing every now and then. Cause sometimes I would be focusing on one quest and he'd be focusing on another and he'd be talking to an NPC and having like a whole fucking wacky adventure. Like I described them as Zorro. Right, where like he's just lost in the city and just there's he's just doing other shit. And every now and then we cross paths it's like, Hey, I need your help and we come in and help him, right? Um, but he would he would go off and do he was very uh focused on a couple of quests where he's like, I'm gonna get this done. Um and then meanwhile I was like trying to figure out like a murder mystery or something, right? So be be prepared for it's not gonna bring you in for every cutscene, so you have to be very active on that, right? But you have to be looking out for like, oh, hey, someone's talking. Let me click on the cutscene and see what's going on, right? And you can vote and like pick like, hey, this is what I would pick and so forth. But sometimes there's cutscenes where it's just going to pick a random character. And that and then it's like a pivotal cutscene. And you're just going to have to roll with what whoever it fucking decided to pick. Um, which I imagine mostly weird thing. Uh, so my friend Eddie was the one who like didn't get to play very much, right? He came in Act 1 and Act 4. Weird thing is that this, <laughs> my game's save file, when I hit save... Named it after him. So apparently he's the main character. And, and there's a lot of cutscenes where I kept picking him. So it was like really annoying that I got outplaced by my friend's character. But whatever. And it's, it's the ending of the game too, man. I was CC'd for the whole end of the game. I had a new sword. I had all this new gear. I was fucking ready for the final boss of the game. I was CC'd every fight for like two hours straight. Eddie killed the boss. He was the one who doing all the damage and going in there, making all the choices while I was fucking sitting there doing nothing. I was just watching them play, man. It was so frustrating. It's so hilarious, but it's frustrating as well. It's really funny watching Bryce drop his weapons ten times because they cast heat metal on him, and he just can't attack, and he just keeps picking them up and equipping them, and then he drops them again. And just shit like that. Uh, it's just There's nothing like playing this game with your friends. It's going to lead to some really hilarious shit. But just do know, multiplayer is going to be very different. It's going to be scuffed in a lot, of, a lot of ways. And you're going to get like somewhat of a story. But it's y'all's adventure. And I would say just go with it. Try not to like command too much of it, right? Um, and just have a good time, man. And then start a single play campaign on your own. Where you know you, you actually get to hang out with Shadowheart and Gale and stuff. And do all that. And that's what I would recommend. My my second playthrough is single player only. Again, I wish I had friends who could jump in, but it seems like that's not going to happen anytime soon. So, hey, those are my recommendations for multiplayer. It's an incredible experience. 10 out of 10. There's no multiplayer like it, but there are going to be some caveats for sure. Playing this blind with a group of people, dude, fucking out of this world, man. I had so much fun. It's just like playing a D&D campaign with your friends and just... It just makes me really sad. There's nothing like maybe Divinity 2, but it doesn't scratch the same itch for some reason. And yeah, man, um, playing more of the single player now, gonna gonna get through it. Other than that, combat is incredible. The loot system is incredible. Uh, the inventory system could use some fucking work, but I understand like what they're going for. <laughs> and yeah, um, maybe like the leveling menus could be a lot faster. I know they're like. I think the leveling menus are fine when you're leveling up, but when you're respecking, they just need to be a list, man, and just fucking get me out of there. Because sitting there going, oh, animation, animation, animation. 
next level animation anime is just it sucks it's it's not fun and i mean you're like you have friends waiting on you while you're trying to respect just because oh shit i should spec in a toughness or some shit i don't know that's my thoughts on Baldur's gate 3 man it, i rented a little bit in the middle there but it, it, it's an incredible experience i recommend it as everyone has has but i very i very much recommend playing it with a group of friends blind and just committing to it it may take y'all forever to finish it but it's gonna be so much goddamn fun and yeah like comment subscribe follow me on twitch.tv slash random drop 0268 um twitter is rando 0268 uh, we are doing reactions to different animes we're gonna try to do some live reactions and like stream them on twitch going we're gonna we're gonna try some new stuff out and i hope y'all are there for the ride uh netflix one piece is gonna be a big thing that we're gonna try to put some con content out on but right now we're doing Hulk. and then you know i've been streaming every now and then but Baldur's gate 3 has been eating my life and i haven't been making videos so i was like i need to pump a video out here let's get this let's do the phone camera thing let's get a light green screen let's fucking do it let's go all the way so like comment subscribe and i will see you next time oh.